All right, so this is gonna be an optimization guide for Valorant using a tool called Process Lasso. Um, what Process Lasso is, is a CPU manager. So it's a CPU, it's kind of like task manager, but it is a lot more advanced and it's a lot more powerful what you can do with it. So it's a CPU manager. You can set up the cores that you want to use for specific applications and uh, you can set the priorities as well. You can do a lot of other things, but this is what I'm going to get into specifically. Um, right now I am on my travel setup, which is a mobile CPU. It is a Intel Core 13th Gen. Um, 13620H, which has e cores. Um, this, my exact settings I'll be using in this video will work for 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs that are mobile or desktop, um, but they will not work exactly because you won't have the e cores on 11th gen and below. And when I say not to follow the exact settings, I mean when it comes to e cores, unless you have a 12th or 13th gen CPU. But if you have an older 11th gen or below, or if you have a Ryzen CPU, the hyper threading, or in AMD's case, is called SMT, simultaneous multi-threading, also applies. Um, SMT and hyper threading both affect uh, Valorant quite negatively uh, when they're activated. So turning them off will give you a great boost in performance. You can also look, like I said, into specific guides. Uh, because I do know some people like disabling the core zero, but that's getting more technical. I'm just talking about the very basic here. And um, here it will be just disabling the SMT or the hyper threading, and that should already give you a great performance uh, boost. So yeah. Um, this program will fix um, frame drops significantly. It will improve FPS quite a bit for some people. For me, it improved around 50 FPS, which is I was averaging around uh, 400 FPS. Uh, after this, I'm averaging around 450. But with the drops, it does not go to 150. It used to go down to 150, and now it goes only down to 300. And that is making the game feel a lot smoother. It fixed a lot of stutter issues, and it is great. So I'm going to be showing how to use it specifically for the CPU. Uh, so don't follow the exact settings if you have uh, no. Uh, 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU, but do uh, mess around with the settings. I'm going to try explaining the best way I can uh, what each setting does and what you want to disable by default and what you want to try disabling or re-enabling just uh, to play around with it. It is super safe. It looks kind of scary, but it is super safe. Never heard of anyone having an issue with it in terms of uh, blue screen or um, just breaking your system but it is always safe to do a system restore point. So you can go on search bar and search for create a restore point. And you can see it here. Um, so I'm only gonna show how to use this application. I can also do a deep loading tutorial. So just ask below if you would like that. Um, but what you wanna do is open this window, it will be in system protection and you select your Windows disk, so C. I only have one disk on this laptop. It uh, shows the little Windows logo here, so you know which one is the main drive. You go on configure, and then I like having it at 5%. It is quite excessive, but it just makes sure you have everything. I have a very light system. It's very optimized. It doesn't have much on it. 1% would have been fine, um, but I just like being on the safe side. You can always delete this after you applied your changes. If your changes look fine and you have no issues with it, you can delete the restore point and you'll get that space back on your drive pretty much. But yeah, uh, make sure to have the system protection on. If you have a one terabyte drive, have it around 5%. If you have 500 gigs, uh, have it around 10%. If you have two terabytes, around 2.5% and etc. So just make the math kind of. Um, but yeah, you just click apply, okay, and then you click create the restore point. It will take a, maybe a one or two minutes to do, and then you're done. Uh, apply, okay, close it out. That's your restore point done. So if you ever have issues, you can go into BIOS and then just roll back everything and you'll not have any issues again. Um, so to install the driver, or the application, sorry, you go into bitsum.com. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a process lasso. Download the free version. The pro version has features that 
mm, we're not going to use for games. And it's not going to give a benefit for us to buy. So just get the free version. It is great. It's super powerful. I don't know anyone that uses the pro version. So you install it. Uh, it's a, just a normal install. Mm, then yeah, you should be done uh, with the install. It should open by itself. If it doesn't, you either have a desktop shortcut, you can open it, or you can search on search bar, process and lasso, and open it through here. I have it on my task manager. I have it set to startup. Um, it does not use any system resources, pretty much. It uses like 16 megabytes of RAM on startup, and no CPU, so, and it is great. So, and I have it set to my taskbar, so I know if it's open, and I can just see what is happening. Um, I can click here, and you should see a window like this. So it's me here in post. I forgot to mention one thing. If you want all these settings to apply within uh, launch, which I would recommend uh, because I already showed how to set it on startup. Um, I forgot to mention that you need to go to options and then CPU, pro balance, and then you click on disable pro balance. Mine is already disabled. If it has a tick mark, it's enabled. By default, it's enabled. Then you go options again, and then you go force mode, and then you click on force mode uh, and enable it. So it's continuously reapply settings. So yeah, that's it. Sorry, I forgot about it completely. So first thing you want to do is set it to startup. So to do that, you go into option and you go into general and configure startup. It's going to show a window with a bunch of settings. Don't change the settings. You'll see at the bottom said, uh, unsure what to do. Just click continue. Everything will be fine. Uh, click continue or next. Uh, and then I'll show another window, which will be in the same kind of thing. And then next, this uh, the application will restart to apply the settings. And now you have it set to uh, apply the uh, all the changes on startup. So the app will open startup. It won't open this window. It will just open in the background. And then you can always open this window if you want to mess with it. Uh, I can also show how to have it on taskbar. So to do that, you go into taskbar settings. And then you scroll down and you go select which icons appear on the taskbar. And you turn process lasso on and it'll appear here. You can open it through here and you can monitor if it's open on startup. Uh, it's super handy. And I like turning uh, other things off uh, just in case. But yeah. So that is that. Uh, exit out. So now you're pretty much done with the setup. Now I'm going to show the settings I use. Um, so this is like task manager. It shows the processes. Uh, I cannot see Valorant currently because I do not have right client on startup so it doesn't appear in all processes so what you want to do is you can just open valorant and it will appear there so once you have valorant open you can just keep it minimized uh, you will see valorant win 64 shipping i like searching for valorant here because sometimes processes open and close and you can like misclick the right click and click on something else by accident so you just go on all processes go on the search bar and search valorant uh, and you can see all the, the stuff happening here. So what you want to do first thing is, uh, like on Task Manager, set the priority to high. So the one that matters is the win64shipping.exe. So that is your actual Valorant. And this doesn't matter as much. This is just the like the launcher of Valorant, uh, I believe. So I still have on priority high. It doesn't affect anything. So you just right click and then you go into CPU priority. And then you go into not current, you go to always. So this is going to always apply when you open the game and you put it on high. Do not put it on real time. Real time will mess up other things. So it will put the priority so high that it will Windows will just start ignoring other applications in the background and they just not going to run properly. So just have it on high. And then same thing for Valorant EXE. You don't have to, but this one I like having on high as well. Uh, and then CPU priority, always, and then high. So that is super cool um, because it already does what you can do on Task Manager, but it does it automatically every time you start the game. So that is cool. Um, and now you can do a lot, of, a lot of other things. So what I want to do now is set the IO priority. So that means your mouse and your keyboard and set it to always again and set it to high. You only need to do it for Win64 shipping. So this is going to give 
your mouse input and your keyboard input priority over other applications. So you get lower latency. Uh, it does improve latency quite a bit. So that is a nice thing to have. And then the next thing, we're gonna go into the cores. So this is very specific. So up to here, you can use this for any CPU. This is gonna be very specific to my CPU. So I'm gonna go into CPU affinity and then I go always, right? And you can see I've clicked disable hyperthreading. I would disable hyperthreading in general for Valorant for any CPU um, because hyperthreading is using virtual cores on, I forgot the name on the, on Ryzen that they use, but it's a different name. It's not hyperthreading, but basically it means you have doubled the number of cores. So I have six cores, uh, 12 threads, right? But you want to disable that for Valorant because the most efficient and the most powerful cores are the actual physical cores. You don't want to use the virtual cores. So you just click activate, uh, disable hyperthreading. If you ever want to go back and just click on none. So disable hyperthreading. That will disable all the efficiency cores and it will only activate the six cores uh, for Valorant. It seems kind of intuitive using less cores um, and threads, but it, it does greatly improve performance. So disable hyperthreading and then just make sure it's on always and you're good. Um, and what I like to do that is super, super cool for specifically for 12th and 13th gen. So if I open Discord, so you can do this to any application you have in the background that you're on. I minimize Discord. Uh, just have the application here and then you can go Discord if it appears. Does Discord not exist? It is here. You have four of them, but applying just on the first one, uh, it'll do everything. So you can see this is on normal. I wouldn't put priority on high, just keep Discord on normal. Um, if you're having issues with voice lagging, just uh, you can put it in high. But if you're not having issues with streaming or your mic is lagging or others uh, that you hear are lagging, just keep it on normal. Uh, for most people, normal is fine. If you set it below normal, you might have issues. But yeah, so you go to set CPU affinity always. Uh, and then you go select CPU affinity. And you can see I only have the E cores activated. I do not use any of my main cores to run Discord. So these cores are basically not gonna affect the uh, Valorant itself because it's just running on cores that Valorant are not, it's not running on. So what you do, you just click this invert uh, selection. So it's just gonna uncheck everything. And then you just check the E cores and then you press okay and you're good to go. You can do this. So Discord has four things, but if you apply just to the first one, it will apply it to all of them. I've done this to Discord, I've done this to Spotify, and I've done this to Google Chrome. You can do it to any background app like G-Hub and that kind of stuff if you do run it. So it is great. Uh, it works really well. Uh, I would only recommend putting a lot of applications to eCourse only if you have four eCourse. If you only have two, I'd recommend uh, only putting maybe Discord or Spotify, but not putting too many things. So yeah. Um, so these are the settings I use. This goes very in depth. You can change memory priority if you have low memory. There are so many settings you can mess with. I greatly recommend watching a more in depth tutorial if you want to like mess more with the settings. So yeah. But hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this like gave a huge FPS boost in the average FPS. And uh, yeah, that is it for this video and I'll see you guys later.